Okay, just to repeat the question, um, to all the actors and actresses who are trying to make an upcoming in this industry, um, who's going through you know endless auditions, who's getting professional photos done for portfolios, and who's also linking with talent agents um, and not really getting anywhere with those steps, what do you recommend or what um, steps do you recommend that they take in order to step their foot into the industry? Well, first I would uh, recommend that they validate non-traditional um, venues uh, to launch their career. Um, it's one thing to link with an agent and to uh, have the basic you know, package of items that you need to market yourself, like headshots and a resume, um, but let's focus energy on that resume. Um, there are non-traditional venues where you can uh, not only get credits, but also interact with people who are also influential. I'll tell a story. When I was uh, first starting in the business, I, uh, w I started as a comedian, and I uh, appeared in venues like black comedy clubs that weren't in the mainstream of the comedy club circuit in New York City. And uh, it just so happened at that time there was a real appetite in the industry for black comedy. Um, there was a boom, really. And they couldn't go to traditional venues to find a whole a lot of black comics. So they came to the clubs uh, that were outside of the uh, traditional places to find talent. And that is always the truth. Um, because whenever you go to places that are, people are traditionally looking, they've already found, or at least they believe, they've already found pretty much what they're looking for. So it's very important if you're going to go to acting classes that you, uh, that you not only learn how to act, but you also make connections there. You also listen to conversations that people who are in the trade um, are saying, well, go in this direction, go in that direction. Because the people who have their feelers out for where uh, to be seen are usually people who are of your generation and of your, uh, in your area pursuing the things you want to pursue. Um, so I would say non-traditional venues, um, and that includes new media which now there's an enormous advantage for people who are entering into uh, the entertainment business that they now no longer just have to appear on episodic television in order to develop a reel for people to look at. So headshots are one thing, a reel is another. And it's very important because people don't necessarily base all of their information about what you're capable of doing from an audition. That A lot of times you come with a reputation. You bring something to the table. And in this case, a reel is uh, an additional piece of what the range of your talent might be and it's and it's in a, in a video form and so when i came up you had to do law and order law and order suv law and order part seven and then you had this reel of episodic clips where you played a cab driver that stole something a rapist and a murderer <laughs> and uh that's not broad but they're television credits and people say oh he's a professional actor but today you can do that and if you can't do that you can also have a web series. Uh, you can also uh, uh, basically uh, uh, have clips of stuff that you just want to do, like it's, you know, stuff you, you say to camera, stuff that you post, things like that. Don't underestimate how, you know, obviously you have to be clever about the, what you present. Um, but I've noticed that a lot of people now are posting scenes of uh, that they that they would they have studied and that they presenting they're presenting they post those and okay. so that would be helpful because it gives an additional insight into casting for casting directors to see where they might place you because a lot of times if you want them to you go on an audition you're usually there because you've been typecast essentially you have you're the right size you're the right shape you're the right uh, height um, when a casting director requests for you to come there, they, 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 they already have insight into who you are and what you, you, you can bring to the table. So as many looks as you can give them uh, uh, in terms of a comedic performance, a dramatic performance, all those things. And whenever you do get an opportunity to go, the last thing, whenever you go to an opportunity to go to an audition, it's best to get the information of the casting director directly so that you don't necessarily have to go through the web of the agent and uh, and their limitations, yep. how they perceive. It. So you can always make direct solicitations, like a cold call if you're in the, the finance uh, area. 
call, you can cold call, cold call a Catherine. Hey, look, here's my uh, information. Here's what I do. Here's what I'm about. This is my size. Here's, here's my reel. Click the link and get exposure to the broader me. Yep. That was a long answer to the question. That's the answer. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, I see that your uh, new film is making stride within the film festivals. Um, yes. What other new projects do you have um, that are currently happening or currently out that you would like to notify people about? Yeah, I'd like to bring to their attention a film that's coming out um, probably by the end of this year. It's called The Wannabe. It's produced by Martin Scorsese. It's a very great movie. It's a period piece about uh, the Gotti, John Gotti trial. It's really and kind of funny, too. <laughs> um, also, um, there's a, a show that I wrote that's, that I have selected scenes of a web series I did called The Doug Life, and now, now it's uh, being streamed uh, video on demand on on Dish uh, Network, and we're going to expand it to a to a full 30 minute show. So that's coming. Um, and uh, I did a, another video on demand series uh, called Brown Nation, which is essentially a, uh, a modern family. Gotcha. So it, it, it'll, it, all of that is coming. Okay, okay. Uh, what word of advice would you want to leave uh, with upcoming actors and actresses that are really trying to, their hardest, uh, really putting forth an effort to get into this industry? Um, I would say two things. First, I would say that you have to have a broad concept of yourself, which is a theme that I continue to try to emphasize to people that are trying to enter into the industry. Uh, secondly, you have to name it and claim it. Uh, you, you, you can't wait for someone to tell you that you're a writer, you're an actor, you're a comedian, you're whatever. You have to be that. You have to believe that you are that. Your list of credits don't dictate whether you are or you aren't. You have to say that you are. You have to believe mm -hmm. that you are. Um, and have a broad perspective on yourself. Try to diversify. Um, try to, to offer as many of your talents as you can. Uh, write. Um, because you never know how you're going to enter into the industry. I remember I was a comedian and I was working at the Apollo and someone saw me and a casting director said, okay, we, we want you to audition to act. So I, then I became an actor. Um, I worked as a comedian and Russell Simmons saw me performing and through uh, my process of uh, working with him, he said, oh, we're looking for a writer for this show that we did. It was a syndicated show. Uh, and I said, oh, I'll do it. So I became a writer. Um, so uh, you should always uh, take advantage of any possible opportunity to break into this field. You shouldn't be narrow in, in, in terms of looking at yourself primarily as one thing because anything could get you in. Okay. Okay. Um, well, you know, I thank you for your time. I appreciate you uh, redoing this interview with me again. Uh, Not a problem. Because of technical difficulties that I've been having, trying to get it together all day today. I, I hope I was able to communicate all of the information that I did before and probably better. You were. You were. Thank and you. I thank you. If you want to try. I got, I, that's another thing. I'm a professional. I want to do, <laughs> do the best for you, my brother. There you go. There you go. You, <laughs> you can retell that Tyler Perry joke again if you want to. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I forgot the context in which I said it, but yeah, um, basically, <laughs> basically, uh, when people are casting, some people have proclivities in terms of the type of things they like to see, and Mr. Perry usually has men with muscles. <laughs> so, oh, if you man. don't have muscles, you probably don't have a chance to be in a movie, your brother. If you're a woman with muscles, maybe you have a shot. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if, if people want to check out your work, uh, Doug, where do they need to go? Um, they can check out my work at uh, uh, the Doug Life Show, uh, dot com, which is where you'll see clips of the Doug Life Show. You, I, most, where you can get the, the updates would be Dougie Doug at Facebook. Okay. So there you can find me. And you can listen to me every Wednesday between 5 and 6 uh, if you're not in New York, whcr.org. If you're in New York, whcr. Uh, whcr 90.3 FM. Okay. New York, New York. Okay, New York, New York. All right. <laughs> well, thank you for checking in. I appreciate it.
Thank you. Yep, you have a great day. Big up to Grand Rapids. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Big ups to New York. I love your city. <laughs> Same here.